Today I'm going to show you how to use a web-based program called PhotoP or Photopia to, um, to work on your images and experiment with them without needing to actually print them. PhotoP works almost exactly like Adobe Photoshop in that you put together images and you organize them onto a canvas and you can cut and slice and copy parts of images and paste them on top of each other and move them around similar to what you would do if you were you had a bunch of prints and you cut them out and made a photo collage to start off you're going to go to photop.com uh, go to file and you want to create a new canvas in this document you can set the size of that canvas you could set whether that canvas is going to be vertical or horizontal in orientation. You can choose, um, I like to go to the print options here and choose um, a letter size paper because that sort of matches what you would be printing on anyway. And hitting this create button. So I'm going to choose a white background, like a white piece of paper that I would be, that I'd be paste, pasting my photos on. I'm going to hit create. And now I need to find my photos. To do that, I am going to go to File. And instead of opening photos, I'm going to choose this option that says Open and Place. I can then go find my photos on my computer. If you're on your Chromebook, you can go look through your Google Drive folders. If you're on a PC like I am, you'll go look through your photo folders. I have some ready to go in my downloads folder. So if you click on a photo and open it up, it puts it on the canvas. You then have the option to resize it. And you can resize it in two ways. You can go and type a percentage up on the width and the height and making sure that they're the same percentage, it would shrink itself down. So if I did 30% on both of these, it will shrink itself down um, relative each size, the you know, each side shrinking the same amount. The other option that you have is to hold shift on your keyboard and to drag. If you don't hold shift, you can accidentally stretch and skew the picture, and then that ends up not looking right. If you make a mistake like this, you can hit this X button up at the top, and it undoes that transformation. So I'm going to hold shift and just shrink this a little bit. When you're done, instead of hitting X, you hit the checkbox. Now I'm going to go find another picture, open in place. I'm going to find something different. So um, I kind of like this one. And again, I think I need to shrink this down, so I hold Shift. I resize it and I'm going to hit OK. Now at this point I have two pictures on my canvas that move independently of each other. Where I look and I select them is over here on the layers palette. You have the top layer which is this uh, image here and you have the bottom layer. As soon as I click on the bottom layer I now can move this bottom image just like if you were playing around with pieces of paper at your desk. So what I'm going to do is show you a couple tools that you can use to cut these up. So the biggest tool that you can use is this polygonal lasso tool. And this allows you to click points to make a selection out of the image. As soon as I return to the origin point, that first point, it creates this dotted line. Now there's a couple things I can do here. Uh, I can hit delete. Um, and it would uh, cut or delete that part of the image out. Um, the other thing I can do is copy and paste, which is what I actually prefer doing. So I take this part and I hit, uh, I'm going to undo that. And I'm going to try this again here. Here we go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy and hit paste and it'll create a new layer and it created a cutout of that picture.
Now I can continue making cutouts of this picture as I go, just simply by grabbing this. Maybe I'll grab a different part of this. I'll copy. Um, I have to be careful at this point. I have to warn you to be careful at this point because um, it, it said the, the area was empty. So I went to copy it. And the reason why it said that was because I wasn't on the correct layer. I have to remember every time you create a new layer, you have to make sure you're on the layer you want to copy from. So I'm going to copy it and paste and it'll create another new layer and I can continue doing this process going back to the original layer cutting out more of this edit copy and now I can hide the original layer if I want to by simply clicking on this eyeball or I could delete the layer by dragging it to the trash bin, which is down at the bottom of the layers palette. So this is essentially it. With those tools, armed with the tool to make selections, uh, armed with the tool to make copies and pastes of selections, you, you can essentially do what, um, what everybody's doing with their pieces of paper, which is cutting out parts of an image, working and manipulating with them, uh, making interesting, um, making interesting uh, other images or making uh, artistic choices about what you can do with your images um, with just kind of playing around with this. One of the things you can do is you can, you can rotate your images. Um, you can, uh, Again, you can rotate them, you can shrink them, you could copy them. Uh, so there's lots of different possibilities for what you want to do. Uh, another thing you can do, I'm going to copy this because I just got a creative idea in my head, is I took a layer and I dragged it to this new layer button here and it copied it. So I have two layers here. And now what I can do is I can go to... Uh, my image and I can transform and flip either the image or I can transform and flip this individual layer and I'm going to flip it vertically and now I have two of the same images flipped which looks really cool um, I really like this a lot this is really fun I've taken one image and made something totally different from it. Um, and I think that's kind of neat. So this is uh, one creative idea that I came up with just playing around with this. When you're done, uh, you want to save your file. I save it twice. I will save it as a PSD file. That means you can always go back and edit it. Um, so I'll go ahead and do that and I'll save it to my downloads and then I'll also export as a JPEG and I'll hit save and that's going to give me the option of um, posting this image to Google to Google Classroom. I'll take that image and that's what I'll turn in to show what, what you've done.